Hi friends. Now we have initiated a series on YouTube where we discuss interesting clinical cases. So I thought I'll discuss an interesting neuroradiological case today. In this case, I'll try to show you how radiology helps in diagnosis of unusual cases. And many times actually it has treatment implications as well. I'm in, on purpose, I'm not telling you the diagnosis in the first slide because I want you to think along with me. And more you think with me, better we will be able to see this. I will look at the case on the workstation so that I am able to see the all the axial images just like you see in the real hospital scenario. Let, let's start with the clinical history first. Now, when what you say as clinical history in your routine clinical life, in radiology, we call it as the referral form. Now, what happens is any time a clinician is advising something or a CT or a MR or a X-ray, they will fill up a small sheet called as the referral form. On this referral form, often only two, three lines are scribbled and we have to kind of correlate them with the radiological finding. And that is why we would always write in the end of our report, please correlate clinically that, you know, many times, you know, people make fun of also. So this is a referral form here where we only have three words written here. Patient with confusion, drowsiness, hypersomnolescence. An MRI brain is advised and we have to look at the MRI brain as the radiologists. Okay, so let me load the MRI brain for you so that we can see the MRI together. Okay, so now in front of you, you have the diff diffusion weighted MRI of the patient. Diffusion weighted MRI is a specialized MRI technique which is based on particle motion. And any area where there is no particle motion will appear hyper intense on diffusion weighted MRI just like the acute infarction. Now, I, I'm sure many of you are aware of that uh, in acute infarct, because of the lack of ATP, because of the hypoxia, the sodium potassium ATPs is not working and there is no movement of particles. Hence, the infarcted area would appear hyper intense. So let's look at the diffusion weighted MRI of this patient first. So I'm tracing the diffusion weighted MRI from below upwards. And you can see there is no abnormal high signal in the uh, cerebellum, pons, and uh, you know in the temporal lobe also. But when I'm going up, still right now, also the scan is normal. There is no hyperintense area. I'm going up. Now see. Now in the uh, rostral midbrain area, you can now see some hyperintense signal. Now this means this is an acute infarct here. I in, go even further, I also see hyperintense signal in bilateral paramedium th thalamic areas. Now, rostral midbrain and bilateral uh, paramedium thalamic area are showing areas of acute infarct. You can see it here okay. on the diff DWI, diffusion weighted MRI image. Now, uh, we would also like to confirm the presence of infarction by looking at the ADC map so that if it is an infarct, if it is an acute infarct, it should look dark on an ADC image. So when I open the ADC image for you now, I am tracing the ADC stands for apparent diffusion coefficient for the people who could not follow. Now I am tracing it here. On the same area where we saw the hyper intense signal, we can see the hypo intense signal in the ADC map in the rostral midbrain and in the bilateral paramedium thalamic areas. Now, the, we know that we are dealing with acute infarct in this territory here. Just to you know confirm it further, let's look at the flare images also. So this is the flare image and I'm tracing it upwards. I'm, I'm taking the looking at the axial sections from below upwards. On the flare image also, okay, on the flare image, you don't see any abnormality. So there is no vasogenic edema. There is only cytotoxic edema. There is only infarction that we saw in the image, in the diffusion weighted and the ADC image. The flare images are not showing any abnormality. Why would you have an infarct bilaterally? Usually if you have an arterial infarction, one artery is blocked, the infarct should be on one side. Why bilateral? Now this bilaterality is pointing towards a variant artery. There is a variant artery, there is a variant uh, in posterior circulation described by the uh, French neurologist Percheron, so which is called as artery of Percheron. Artery of Percheron is a variant artery which supplies bilateral, uh, you know, uh, paramedian midbrain and the bilateral uh, paramedian thalamus and the rostral midbrain is supplied by the artery of Percheron. 
it is not present it's a very rare anatomical variant but if the artery of percheron is obstructed the infarct would be in the territory that we just saw in the images with us so our diagnosis here will become artery of percheron infarction artery of percheron territory infarction now let's look at the slides again and let's go back to the clinical presentation so the clinical presentation here was confusion drowsiness and hyposomnolence so we need to understand how a patient with artery of percheron infarction presents typical presentation in these patients is is if you have only the thalamic infarcts then the typical presentation is vertical gaze palsy memory impairment akinetic mutism confusion drowsiness coma hyposomnolence that we saw in our patient but if the if there is bilateral paramedian thalamic infarct along with rostral midbrain lesions also then you can have things like hemiplegia cerebellar ataxia movement disorders and oculomotor dysfunctions also is possible now what would be the treatment in this case because when we are looking at an integrated case we need to have a idea on the treatment also treatment in, in is thrombolysis and intravenously administered heparin treatment followed by long term anticoagulants but it is not so simple because this diagnosis this diagnosis is not a easy diagnosis to make why, why would you miss it you now there are three reasons why this diagnosis is often delayed and often we miss out on the therapeutic window of thrombolysis in these patients because the diagnosis is delayed this diagnosis is often delayed because of three reasons you can yourself see the variety of presenting symptoms the symptoms are so varied so varied that it is like you know often we miss it there and the another thing that i feel which why we miss this diagnosis is you know ct is not the optimum uh, modality and often we do a ct in patient in emergency in a you know patient with a acute say, presentation to do a ct and ct would often miss it in our imaging also we saw the finding was only visible on diffusion weighted mri there was nothing visible on flare so that tells us here it is if you don't do a diffusion weighted mri at in these patients you will miss the diagnosis and the therapeutic window for thrombolysis will be lost and third reason is the it is not a uh, is very it's a rare anatomical variant artery of percheron so many times a clinician or a radiologist may not be aware of it so you may miss uh, these uh, findings uh, or you may not be able to interpret these findings if you do not know about the artery of percheron territory infarction so i hope you enjoy this episode of radiology case discussion do write back to me and you know do tell me that you know if there is any more clinical cases that you want to discuss or you want me to create i, I will be more than happy to you know do that do follow us on dams daily channel on youtube and do let us know if you are enjoying the uh, clinical teaching that we are initiating here but keep in mind that this is how actually the entire workflow in the radiology department happens this is different from a clinical workup where you first in detail work up everything here in radiology we just have a referral form a workstation and different sequences which we evaluate and this is how we diagnose the patient i wish you all all the best